is the first time we're doing one of these without a formal program. Yes. The program is everybody that comes today. Yes. And we have a good turnout. Well, how do you think this is going to go? Uh, remember the Titanic? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting because everybody has a, has a story to tell. And uh, they couldn't do it before because we had a program and there was no time. But now there's going to be time. And... You'll hear some interesting stories, I'm sure. Well, Linda, it's good to see you again. So, the News Geezers, have you enjoyed the events over the years? Absolutely, and I'm glad we're back in business. Uh, what do you remember most out of all the uh, wonderful events we've had here? Well, I think all of them. I mean, all the panels have been so great. And it was so great the year that we had Steve Binder, who was the producer of the Elvis doc, uh, 68 comeback special. He was here. And that was uh, a thrill for me because I'm a big Elvis fan. And he told all the, the whole story, which was fabulous. A lot of, uh, we've had panels with women who were in, um, in news before women were in news, a lot of them in TV. All the people who ran the helicopters that did the news. I mean, all of the programs have been fantastic. What does it mean to you for everybody to get, be able to get together like this? As one guy said to me, it means we're still here. <laughs> So, Kelly, so great to have you here. What does news geezers mean to you? First of all, Bob, the geezers means Bob Tarlow. You're the one who put it together, keeps it going, and works tirelessly to make it happen. But you hate the name. I have always hated the name, and I've complained to you about it so many times. Geezers, come on. I want to call us newsies. However, my dear friend, Bob Long, who was our news director, uh, he's not on the planet anymore, but he's here. Hi, Bob. He's the one who came up with the name, so we're stuck with it, right? Oh, I, I like the new... I'm a geezer. I'm okay. You're not. Oh, I'll you're, never be a geezer. No, you'll never be a geezer. No, I refuse to be a geezer. But it's so nice to have you here. You really grace these lunches with your presence. We've watched you work so hard, you and Steve Skutsky, so hard to keep the geezers going. And, you know, we're proud of you. For people who don't know, just quickly summarize what your involvement was in the movement that flowed out of Nicole Simpson's death? Well, I was a news photographer um, with KTLA at the time. Before that, I was with CNN and covered the trial. I was there like you know almost every day, and I it, it and I saw how the domestic violence kept getting pushed back farther in the conversation, and and some people didn't even you know believe it, and so that stayed with me. You know, for many years, and five years ago, I made a, a music video called I Remember Nicole that raises awareness on domestic violence. And so it's kind of um, made me become, you know, an activist uh, since then. And um, I also just, as a, yeah, so that, that, that's what, you know, the background is. Yeah, so I remember Nicole, if you Google it, it will come right up, and I'd love for you to share it and watch it on YouTube. And thank you, thank you for having me here. I, I Joel used to be my boss. I've seen a couple other my bosses. I, I've seen some reporters I'd work with. So this is this is a blast. So thank you so much for thank allowing you. me to come here. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Sam. Yes. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Well, thank you very you have much. A book. I can tell you, at my age, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I agree with you. Tell me about your book coming up. Oh, thank you very much. It's called An Urban Odyssey, A Critic's Search for the Soul of Cities and Himself. And it's being published in October, 
and basically it starts from the steeps of Brooklyn and takes you through my various jobs I've had, 75 years of journalism, starting with the Long Island Daily Press as a Queen Scenes columnist in sports, along with notable assholes like Jimmy Breslin, then to the New York Times, Washington Post, Rupert Murdoch, and you know, I've had, it's been, I've had a ringside seat at a circus. And it's really been a wonderful circus. And I tell the stories, real or not real. It's hard to tell, but I call it always as I was as a critic for the LA Times, I call it the way I see them. So I have my fight over the years with Frank Gehry, who tried to suck up to me as the architecture critic. And as I write, played the Jew card. Thanks, Sam. Thank it's been a pleasure, and thank you. I, Mary, I hope I'm around for the book. You come back in September, and we'll, we'll plug the book some more. I, I, I do the other side, Bob. I manage the news media request for Virgin Galactic, and it's going great. You know, we, we launched six times in six months last year. We have another launch coming up in the second quarter, and... And, uh, and we're building a new spaceship, which is a weird thing to say. How, how often do you have use the word spaceship in a sentence without, without it being a joke? We're actually building a new mass-produced spaceship. It's really cool. Where does space tourism go, and where will it be 10 years from now? now I, think, I think eventually the price will come down, and I think eventually, you know, there's people who want to put hotels in space. Uh, there's point-to-point -point travel in suborbital space that people are talking about. Um, hasn't happened yet. Um, it's very expensive right now. But I'd, I'd say in 10 years, I think it would be a fairly regular thing. And, and who knows, maybe you, know, maybe you and I will get to go. Well, I'd be willing yeah. if I go up with you. <laughs> what, what's the seat price now? Uh, we, we, we have, the last announced price was $450,000 a seat, which is still well below what it, break, the break-even point. So it, it'll probably go up before it comes back down, but, but that's to be expected. It looks like a small space shuttle, but it's... It makes a runway landing. makes a runway landing. It, the only thing that's not reused is the rocket motor, but everything else is reused. It was designed by Burt Rutan. We started by winning the X Prize. Out of Mojave. Out of Mojave, that's right. Yeah. 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 So it's exciting. It's fun. I get to hang around test pilots. I get to learn a lot. I get, you know, I'm, I'm, always, the, I'm always the dumbest guy in the room because I'm around a bunch of engineers. It's wonderful. What's Sir Richard like? I've only met Richard once, and I thought he was a very gracious, inquisitive. Uh, he, I, I love, I love the, 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 the culture behind the Virgin Companies. They're all separate. They're not owned by Richard, but they're but we share a culture and, and it's a wonderful, wonderful culture. Thank you. Sure, buddy. You bet. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Ruben, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. You've kind of done the orbit on the west coast of various places to work and be. What's next? Uh, well, I'm not really sure. Um, uh, El Segundo Spectrum News has been very nice to me, uh, but that contract ends uh, at the end of the month. That was a six-month deal there. So I'm looking for my next gig. Uh, you might see me going maybe to another market. That's as far as I can say on that, because I've been talking to a couple of people in other places. Of, of all the markets you've worked in, which one did you like the best as a news executive and why? Well, look, I'm an L.A. boy, so L.A. is my baby. <laughs> I love at Los Angeles. I remember the first time I got, even before I got to be a manager, going to KTLA and going through downtown L.A. and being in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard was just m marvelous. So any time I can work in L.A. is the best time. This is the, this is the best market on the planet. But you sound like you. You're just, you, the only difference we know is, is in your forming of words. But yeah. your voice is fine. Still yeah. there. Okay. Well, John T. Fisher. You always like to use the T, right? Well, 
Well, it's just so I'm not confused with all the other John Fisher. John Fisher's ah, okay, fair enough. John, what you up to these days? Um, well, mostly staying out of trouble as best I can. Uh, but you know, when I got out of TV news, I started to think about, well, what are the things I really enjoy? And one of the things I've always enjoyed was home architecture. I actually, when I was in junior high school, I designed my parents' kitchen when they did a remodel. So I found that I enjoyed that. And then uh, when KTLA rebuilt the newsroom once, they rebuilt it using my design. So I found that I was good at it and I enjoyed finding things. And I've had a camera in my hand since I was seven years old. So I decided, what can I do that takes those two things and puts them together? So I'm a real estate photographer. Hey! You know, what the heck? You drones and ground? Yeah, everything. You, you name it, I do it. And how many real estate photographers can say they're a multi-Emmy award-winning cinematographer? That's right. So, you know, there you go. That's great. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Do you miss the news business? Terrible. Well, let's clarify. I miss what I remember as the news business. I don't think I would enjoy it today as much as I used to. The things that I would still enjoy tremendously is the technology. I, you know, I've always been a techno geek. And the technology today, you know, hell, my, my iPhone has higher resolution than the very best mini cam I ever used in my life. And you know, you don't need a live truck, you don't need a sat truck, you don't need a big edit bay. I can do everything I want to do with my iPhone and my, and my laptop. And just tell me about your beautiful daughter. Oh, uh, I love my daughter. You know, we all love our kids. But, you know, my wife and I, we weren't able to have kids of our own. So we went out and did the adoption thing. And I got to tell you, you'd never know there's a difference. Love is love. And I love my little girl, who's not so little anymore. But she will always be my little girl. And she's doing great. I'm thrilled to death that she's in college now. I uh, can't believe she's in college now, but she is. And, uh, you know, I get to see her as often as possible, you know, usually every other weekend. So, you know, we keep in touch. We have a great relationship. And she, she actually likes to talk to me. So for as long as she's willing to talk with me, I'll keep it going, you know. Thanks, John. You bet. Thank you. Bob, thank you for doing this. And, you know, who knew... When we sat down at Louise's, yeah, I guess it was like 20, 2010 or 2011, yeah. Yeah, 2010. That, it, that it would grow to this yeah. massive group of people. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's just by inviting friends and saying, hey, we're going to get together for lunch. So, Bob, you had a different sort of format today. Why did you change it? Well, part of the reason is I'm 80, as you know, and putting together the full production that we were doing for 12 years, even with Steve Skutsky's fantastic help the last five years, was really getting too much. The group started, Robert, in 2010, and it started as a social get-together. And I thought, why not go back to what we were doing then? We did it well then. And I could tell from today it worked. And people seem to be really happy with this format. Everybody was a speaker. Everybody who wanted to speak. And it was a gratifying, great feeling. We have 47. Maybe next time around in September we have even more. But it made me happy. Yeah, it was a good company here today, good crowd. And uh, we heard some pretty good stories. Yeah, we did. Everybody's got stories, especially when you're like our vintage. Whether it's the Berlin Wall, and you told a great story about it, or whether it's something domestic, whether it was the Manson case, or whatever it might have been, uh, everybody's got great stories. And most people have shared those experiences with others in the room. So to bring everybody together to kind of relive that, I think means a great deal to the person who's telling the story and to those in the room who receive it. One of the interesting stories I thought was one of the good old stalwarts here, over 90 years old and driving Uber? What? Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that wild? I, I told the story that we're talking about Lou Orwin here. And while um, Pete Noyes was still alive, he called me and he said, listen, I had a medical appointment today. <laughs> and uh, guess who showed up as the Uber driver? None other than Lou Irwin. I said, really? So it turned out, yeah, he talked about all the thousands of people he's driven. He's amazing. He, Lou Irwin, you know you're amazing. Absolutely amazing. Among other things, as an Uber and Lyft driver, how many people have you gotten from one place to the other using either service? 
19,000 on Uber and another 8,000 with Lyft. When he was still alive, Pete Noyes was a user of your service. He had to get to a medical appointment. He called me up and he said, you know what? I had to go to the doctor today. I called up Uber and Lou Irwin arrived. He said, I couldn't believe it. And he said, you did a great job of driving me. Well, what was that like? You know, I met, uh, well, I ac actually hadn't met him. I, I used to talk to Pete when I was first starting out. If I got a big story, I'd call him at City News Service. And he put the story uh, on the uh, newswire. And I'd, be, I'd not be credited for it, but the station would be. And that helped me a lot, uh, getting additional work. I used uh, those city news uh, stories in a, uh, in a brochure that uh, my agent used to get me work. And I had uh, run across Pete for years. And suddenly, I uh, get a call to pick up this uh, gentleman who lived three blocks away, from, or three miles away from me. And he gets in the car, and he, we chat a little bit. He asked me what I was doing in my previous life. I said, well, I was a news reporter. And he says, well, so was I. Uh, what, what's your name? He, I said, Lou Irwin. He says, well, I'm Pete Noyes. I used to talk to you on the phone. And uh, we got together several times after that. Uh, close by for lunch and I'd pick up his prescriptions at, at a local uh, drugstore and we became great friends. Let's talk about the state of the industry today, both radio and television news. It's primarily local. What are your reflections on what you see and watch? It's easy to do local stories. That's the easiest kind of story to cover. Everybody's interested in what's going on in their neighborhood. It's far more difficult to cover national and international stories. Interestingly, when I uh, did the credibility gap on KRLA, we covered a lot of uh, national stories to the exclusion of a lot of local stuff. But I think we did it in an interesting fashion and people responded to that. And. Uh, you know, there just aren't any good writers anymore in, in broadcasting. No, I mean, I mean, it's atrocious. Hey, tell me about the session, the geezer session we just had, versus the ones we did for many years with formal programs. How did this one stand out? Well, I think this stood out in a, in a way that the others hadn't because people got to tell their stories and there are a lot of people here who have great stories to tell and we're, we're talking about a room full of people who've covered historic things for decades and it's a valuable experience to share with uh, with all of us and so people get a chance to do that and it it's liberating for some people are telling personal very personal stories uh, things that you know normally you wouldn't know about them and they're you know, they're talking about themselves and how they fit into this business and what they did and how their careers evolved or maybe devolved, as some would say. So it's, it's fun. It's great. And, the, the, you know, the structure was great because the structure was every individual setting up their own structure. And it was it gave you a break. You didn't have to put a whole program together. Right. And... Uh, at the same time, everybody had things to say, and it was wonderful to hear the stories. It was just wonderful.